that will do whatever it takes to win the championship. What's Degrassi doing? Every 10th matters and you can't afford to make any mistakes. Oh, things are all no! Up. Can't fight it without data. Excuse me, no. We're heading into our second race of the London e -Prix, and it's the Royal Docks that will be the home of the Electric Racing Championship. As the track winds along the River Thames and into the Excel Centre. Here we are, the drivers arriving this morning. Just four points between the top five drivers. Lucas Degrassi, former Formula E champion for Audi. Rene Rast there, looking very happy as he's coming in. Diaz Tachita sitting at the top of the team's championship, just by two points ahead of Envision Virgin Racing. Jaguar Racing sitting in third. Neo 333 down at the bottom with just 18 points. Tough day yesterday, huh? Yeah. Man, how much grip was there in the race? Oh, got a lot of grip in the race. Mate, apart from that turn 10 where yeah. you're literally... Skating. Holding on for dear life every time. Yeah. Pretty mad that like British driver won as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't us, mate. <laughs> Hopefully today we have a better day. A couple of years ago, the, uh, the former E drivers were asked the question for videos, who's the most underrated driver? And by far and away, Oliver Turvey came out on top. Turvey is a Cambridge Blue, you know, his engineering background is, is prestigious, and that's really helped drive the NEO uh, team in many ways. I was the first ever Cambridge Blue in motorsport. You know, to have, have that engineering background as a driver, I think is quite unique, and I think it helps me as a driver with the technical side of, you know, being able to feedback information to the team, to the engineers for, for development, for the setup. I'm quite an analytical driver. I think that kind of suits street racing because you, you can't afford to make any mistakes. You know, there's often less than a second uh, splitting the whole 24 cars in qualifying. Every tenth matters and you have to be close to the wall without actually hitting it. And I think that's uh, been one of my, my strengths as a driver. Is it ever a little bit like with engineers, like this guy knows too much? <laughs> It does mean that you can't pull the wool over his eyes. But I think as an engineer, you learn quite quickly as a race engineer. But never try and pull the wool over a driver's eyes because they will see it through it if they're any good. And a driver guides not only what happens at the circuit here, but also the development path going forward. And if anything, that's when his engineering now comes into even more use because he can have a look at the long term path and see what will work and what won't work. Over lockdown last year, I got like a Tumblr ask where someone was like, why hasn't Oliver Turvey left Neo? Like, like he's a good driver, why is he staying with this team? That, like, they had no hope of scoring points, like, and we all knew that. And I was like, you know what, I'll ask him. I think throughout my whole career, I've always been very loyal to, to um, teams and, and people that have supported me or given me opportunities. It's my ambition to, to bring this team in to be successful. If he gets involved in a project, he's not leaving until it's finished, you know. And I think that is actually very admirable. He's one of the things that people really respect about what Ollie's done over the course of his career. Joining Turvey for this season is uh, Tom Blomquist, son of uh, World Rally Champion Stig Blomquist, but sort of really making a name for himself in circuit racing. His dad, Stig Blomquist, the World Rally Champion, his home rally, Rally Sweden, he won seven times, which I believe is still a record that stands. I mean, I got my first quad bike, I think I was three years old. So then, when that's like ingrained in your life since you're like three, there wasn't a point in my life where I thought I wanted to do anything else. You know, I was also lucky that some of the genetics, or, you know, had passed down and I actually had some form of talent, not much, just a little, a little enough to get by. I suppose it can be hard to step out of the limelight. At what point is Tom Blomquist no longer Stig Blomquist's son? At what point is it that Stig Blomquist is Tom Blomquist's dad? When does that balance change that he's the more high profile one? Yeah, so Tom Blomquist is, a, is another one of those drivers where he's a driver's driver. Blomquist is someone who, yeah, every time he's been in Formula E, he's, he's been in a not great car. You know, we're not stupid. We know that in the same situation for everyone, we don't have the fastest car. Like, we know that. And some of the biggest car manufacturers in the world on this grid with a lot more resources than, than we. 
But, you know, Formula E is so, so damn competitive now. It's, it's crazy, you know, in qualifying, first to last is like a second. So we've came from, let's say, down here and we're now here. And we just now need to, now it's about making small steps. Getting points is, 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 is a huge result for us, huge result. But we need more, we want more. As we count down to the second race here in London, drivers have just three races left to claim Formula E's first World Championship title. After winning here yesterday, BMW's Jake Dennis is now just two points off the leader Sam Bird. Mercedes EQ's Nick de Vries is back in the running after finishing second, and both Audi drivers are well in the hunt. After swapping places twice yesterday, they came across the line in fifth and sixth. I've been involved in tight championships in the past, but this one, phew, I tell you, I think it's one of the hardest to try to predict what could happen. If you're in the game, coming out of London into Berlin, then you're in with a chance. And after that, I'll tell you, it's Las Vegas. Anything could happen. Yeah, so the top 15 is very, very close. Anyone can win, really. So we just need to make sure that we are in the right moment, in the right time. I think uh, we have to keep pushing, have to be smart, we have to collect the points if we want to win the championship. Here we go, round 13 of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship, and here's how the grid lines up. Neo 333's Oliver Turvey starts in last place. Unbelievably, right in front of him at the back of the grid lie two-time champion Jean-Eric Verne, reigning champion Antonio Felix da Costa, and current championship leader Sam Bird. Tom Blomquist starts in 14th. We shouldn't be having a race now, should we? Should be getting involved. <laughs> Audi's Lucas de Grassi starts 10th. Lucas in the comp check. And Mercedes EQ's Stoffel van Dorn is on pole. Just 21 points separate the top 13 drivers. And we go green in London. Pretty decent start from Oliver Rowland. Van Dorn chops across immediately. Lynn almost gets squeezed out, but the top three are in the same positions. It's Mitch Evans who's looking racy, trying to go around the outside of Nick de Vries. Can't quite pull it off. Three wide further back. Tom Blomquist getting fed out into the wall. Did it put me in the wall? Any damage, just report the damage if you're coming in or not. Into the pits comes Tom Blomquist, such a shame. We're a lap in. Window open. No, oh, and there's the move from De Vries. Bold stuff. Currently booing me on sector one behind you. <laughs> Nissan and the Audi are still oh. getting together. Oh, and now and they're just driving into each other. Rass car is broken. Race over, race over. Oh, just like Rene Rast, Tom Blomquist's race is over after being pushed into the wall by Norman Natto. Cassidy, surely in the barriers there. Degrassi having a huge lockup coming into turn 10. So the Mercedes EQ car swap positions at the front. To cost us off. Lotter just pushed me into the wall. Why am I not surprised? Second in the championship coming into this race. It doesn't look like he's going anywhere, does it? Safety car deployed. He's the only one. I overtook 10 guys there. He's the only one who cannot accept it. Lucas, safety car. Okay, I have a puncture. Oh, what's Degrassi doing? Degrassi telling his engineers he's got a puncture. So into the pits he goes. Stop. Okay. Lucas Degrassi has just come into the pits but gone straight out again. After saying he had a puncture, they didn't change any of the tyres. And now Degrassi has left the pit lane and taken the lead of the race. That's one for the stewards. Degrassi's come out in the lead. If he didn't stop, they need to give him a black flag. The race gets underway. There's the attack from Mitch Evans up the inside of Gunter. Well done. Oh, things rolling locked no! up. Roland smashes into the side of Stoffel van Dorn, who surely is going to be out of the race. If not, certainly out of the fight for the lead. I'm so sorry to Stoffel. So going back to how Lucas Degrassi gained the lead, the FIA rules state if you enter the pit lane, then all four wheels of the car need to come to a complete stop. So Audi need to prove that that happened, or it'll be a penalty. Give me the data as soon as possible, they can fight it. Can't fight it without data. There's Alan McNish sprinting down to race control. Absolutely <laughs> intense racing here in London. Lynn goes through. Lucas de Grassi has been given a drive-through penalty, but it looks as though they're not going to take it and fight their case with the FIA. Excuse me, no. Sam Bird trying to go past Nato, and he's in the wall. Oh. What a f***ing 
Lucas, we got a black flag. We were under investigation and they gave us a drive-through penalty and we didn't uh, trick it because Ellen was there. We didn't win the race. The atmosphere inside the Mahindra garage is absolutely palpable because Lucas de Grassi comes up through the final corners. He's in the head of the race, but he's been black flagged. So it's Alex Lynn, the man from Essex in his home race, who comes out of the final corner and takes his first Formula E victory. Alex Lynn takes the win. <laughs> So Alex Lynn becomes the second British driver to win here in London. Neither Neo 333 driver scores any points after Blomquist had to retire and Oliver Turvey finished in 14th. Well fought. Yeah, but could stay with them, but I couldn't get close, even in attack mode. Couldn't get anywhere near them on the exit. Thanks for everything. You guys have been, been great. Including Lucas de Grassi, who was disqualified after his attempt to stretch the FIA rules, let's say, in the pit lane. Well, basically, we're in quite a unique situation here in London that the pit lane is quite short. And also, the safety car was unusually slow. And in reality, it was quicker to go through the pit lane, which the regulations do allow. Lucas comes to a stop and accelerates out. But unfortunately, the stewards deemed that he didn't stop the car. The, the, like in football, there is offside. You play with the rules. We did everything by the book today. Yeah. So I'm very proud that the team actually had a bold move. It was a margin call, it was a lot of risk involved, but it meant for us 25 points in the championship and being P2 or P1. Yeah. So it was a worth taking and everything was within legal boundaries. Thanks for keeping entertaining with this. <laughs> Thank Cheers. you. See you later. Thank you. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. has been the most unpredictable uh, championship of all times. What was he doing? He just turned straight into the side of me. What's possible timing? There's 18 drivers that can win this thing. It's never been heard of. Two races to go in the ABB Formula E World Championship. I think any driver which says they don't get nervous is uh, a bull thing. <laughs>